Healthcare in Germany. How does it work? How good is it? What does it cost? Let's take a look. Ah, let's start again in the past. A lot of knowledge was written down, applied and multiplied in monasteries. Home remedies were used in every house, some of which are still in use, such as chamomile tea, sage or cold calf compress. There were also corresponding house books in which this knowledge was written. Historically, the healing profession was divided into three broad areas. Midwives were responsible for childbirths and took care of mothers and her babies. Artisan wound doctors, as well as barsers, barbers or tooth rippers, took care of all sorts of people's needs, while academically trained physicians made the diagnosis and also basically gave advice on how to live in a healthy life. Since the first universities all allowed theological studies as well, students were bound with a kind of consecration that they should not shed blood. So it was a matter of opening a body or working with open wounds. This was forbidden to students and studied physicians by, among other things, the Council of Tours in 1163. Then, from 18th century, both fields were approximated. The last wound examination was taken in Württemberg in 1873 and the last craft surgeon ended his professional activity in the beginning of the 20th century. Obstetrics was also increasingly taken over by physicians, which led, among other things, to women increasingly giving birth lying down in bed, because it was, of course, unreasonable to expect the studied male physician to bend over. An important point in hygiene was a realization of Ignaz Semmelweis, a Hungarian physician who worked in Austria, that lack of hygiene could lead to increased childbed fever. In this video, on the basics of labor law in Germany, I covered the introduction of statutory health insurance in 1883 and later nursing insurance. In the 20th century, English, French and as well as German were the most important languages for physicians, with most medical textbooks written in German. Numerous Jewish physicians were also active in Germany, especially in research, which was repugnant to the Nazis. Therefore, the Nazis particularly promoted the branch of Heilpraktika. Actually, Heilpraktika were already known in the Middle Ages and early modern times. In 1928, the Großverband der Heilpraktika was formed in Germany under the Nazis and their leaning of scientific medicine because too many Jewish physicians had provided great insights, the Heilpraktiker Gesetz was enacted to protect alternative practitioners, Heilpraktiker, from persecution as quack doctors. In 1961, the first Medicine Act was passed, which provided for compulsory registration, but still had major shortcomings, as was seen in the Talidomid scandal in later 1960s. The New Medicines Act of 1976 provided for clinically tested efficacy and also for scientific testing of side effects. However, the strong lobby of alternative medicine obtained special regulations for, for example, homeopathics that they were considered medicine but did not have to prove any efficacy. On homeopathics in the USA, this is explicitly stated on the packaging in this country, the manufacturers nevertheless claim that there is an effect beyond the placebo effect. But let's take a look at the healthcare system in Germany based on a life history. Children are covered by the statutory health insurance through family insurance. For children, there are pediatricians who specialize in childhood diseases. In addition, children also already go to the dentist. Especially small children often have problems with their ears, so they see an ear, nose and throat specialist. If a child has problems with speech, he or she should see a specialist in phoniatrics and pediology. If a child needs glasses, 
have him or her examined by an ophthalmologist. If the child is a girl and is entering puberty, look for a gynecologist. If the child is a boy and may have a problem such as phimosis, consult a urologist. If there is a leg fracture while playing, one probably goes to the orthopedist. When the child comes of age, sometimes from about the age of 16, the child no longer goes to the pediatrician, but to the family doctor. Depending on what else is needed, there are numerous other specialists. As long as a child is still in school, vocational training or studies, and at the same time under 25, the child can remain insured in the family insurance. After that, the person has to insure himself or herself. This happens automatically if one takes a job that is subject to social insurance, earning over 520 euros per month and earns below the income threshold of currently 66,000 euro per year or 5,500 euro per month. Those who earn more than this can continue to be insured voluntarily in the statutory health insurance and thus automatically insure the whole family or opt for private health insurance. With the health insurance, one decide also for a care insurance. The current contribution in health insurance is currently 14.6% of the gross salary, half of which is borne by the employer and the other half by the employee. The contribution to long-term care insurance is currently 3.6% for under 25-year-olds or over 25-year-olds with children. Without children, a surcharge of 0.6% is added. This contribution is also borne equally by the employer and the employee. The exception in Saxony, where the employee pays a little more but still has the day of prayer and repentance as a paid holiday. If a person now joins forces with a new partner and both are expecting a child, they look for a midwife. The gynecologist regularly examines the mother and child and together with a midwife one prepares for birth and the time after the birth. The expectant mother informs the employer and automatically receives maternity protection leave six weeks before the planned date of birth, which continues for eight weeks after the birth. Of course, the maternity leave is paid. A home birth is rather the exception in Germany. Typically are births in a clinic or birth center. This had to do, among other things, with insurance for the midwife, which in the past became so expensive that only a few midwives could afford it. It is about the insurance in case something goes wrong during the birth and then possibly payments have to be made to the mother or the child afterwards. Thus it is often the case that the midwife who cared for the mother at home before the birth and presumably taught the father and mother in childbirth preparation courses is not the midwife who performs the birth in the clinic. In the clinic midwives are basically in charge during birth. Doctors are present to help if need or to perform a caesarean section, for example, but if everything goes normally, the midwife can handle it all by themselves. Also in modern delivery rooms, all kinds of birth methods are possible, from chair to bed or water birth. Many hospitals have specialized birthing wards. When mother and child leave the clinic a few days after the birth, the midwife comes back to follow-up care. The child is automatically insured under the family insurance plan. The family now looks for a pediatrician again. The doctor often have their own practices. However, there are also group practices or medical centers in which different doctors practice together. The practices and medical centers are typically open from about 7 or 8 on Monday until 1630 to 1800 in the evening. On Wednesday afternoon the practices are often closed. At night and on weekends there are always practices that have emergency service or there are central emergency services in which 
Alternately, different doctors have emergency service. For typical illnesses, contact the physicians in the emergency services only in case of an emergency, the emergency room in the hospital should be visited. The telephone number 116117 is a medical on-call service which can make a diagnosis by telephone or inform about the next emergency service. In life-threatening cases, severe chest pains or heart trouble or serious injuries dial 112, the emergency number. This will reach the emergency call center which will also inform and dispatch an ambulance or even an emergency doctor. These costs are also covered by health insurance. If you need medication, you can get it in a pharmacy. Pharmacies also have normal opening hours and some are open on Saturday. There are prescription drugs and pharmacy drugs. Prescription drugs must be prescribed by a doctor. There is a copay of 5 euro for adults. Children and chronically ill have no copayment. Pharmacies also have an emergency service after hours and on weekends or holidays. There is a list for each region which pharmacy currently has emergency service. You have to pay for pharmacy drugs yourself. When using the emergency service there can be an emergency service fee of 2 euro 50. Pharmacies are managed by a pharmacist and customers are advised only by pharmacists or pharmaceutical technical assistants. In addition pharmaceutical commercial employees may work in the office. Often people have a house pharmacy to which they always go, which is also familiar with their personal medications and also keeps an eye on allergies and intolerances. Hospitals in Germany are often either church-run, municipal-run or belong to university. There are also a few hospital corporations. In Germany, for-profit hospital corporations are viewed with suspicion. In 2012 there were 510 publicly owned hospitals, 603 non-profit hospitals and 579 privately owned hospitals. As a rule all physicians and all hospitals work together with all health insurance companies. There are a few private clinics that focus exclusively on private patients. Here you are usually not cared for as a statutory insured person or you have to bear the cost yourself. If one becomes older and in need of care, it is checked with a care level is necessary and then receive support from the nursing care insurance. Here you can get a mobile care service that supports the person in need of care in their own home or accommodation in an appropriate facility. Relatives who care for the person can also be supported by the long-term care insurance. If it becomes necessary at the end of life, there are also hospices where people are cared for until they die. Here there is incredible care for people of all ages, which not only makes the patient's journey easier, but also supports the relatives during the time of parting. So what is the big difference between public and private health insurance? Typically the self-employed civil servants or people with high incomes are or were privately insured. People also like to advertise with examples of how little a 30 year old single man has to pay. Here an example. The man would have to pay 177 euro to 279 euro per month. Also here the employer pays up to half of the basic amount. We take this amount with our private health insurance of 212 euro. At the end we would have net 4166.99 euro left and would be privately insured. If this person would be voluntarily statutory health insured, he would have at the end 3925.67 euro. 
euro 62 cent more to pay for the tertiary health insurance where doctors like to have private patients because they can bill higher who would there still have statutory health insurance uh, me but why for one thing we just insured our one person we don't have a spouse and children insured in the statutory health insurance everyone would be directly included in the private one everyone has to be insured individually secondly the statutory health insurance pays sick pay if you are still sick after six weeks of continued pay for up to a year and a half a woman of course also receive payments during maternity leave with private health insurance you have to insure these benefits additionally thirdly I have to pay into statutory insurance as long as I receive a salary if I'm ill and the six week of continued pay are up I no longer receive pay but sick pay thus I no longer have to pay into statutory insurances but I'm still insured when I become unemployment or retire I no longer receive any pay so I no longer pay any contribution but I'm still insured the private insurance company makes me pay for the continued insurance coverage every month furthermore private insurances become more expensive with age finally sick notes are automatically transmitted to the employer if one is statutory insured if you have private health insurance you have to submit the yellow slip to the employer yourself typically the private insured pays the bills themselves and recovers the money from the insurance company later on the other hand if the insurance is not used in one year one often gets a refund or a discount on contributions for the next year it is possible to change from the statutory health insurance with a corresponding salary to the private health insurance but it's very difficult to return to the statutory health insurance self-employed persons can also be insured voluntarily in the statutory health insurance what if I'm a foreigner in Germany and get sick the health system is not designed to make a profit but every activity must be remunerated the costs are defined uniformly how much which activity may cost thus not every doctor or hospital can charge its own costs however the costs for privately insured persons can be higher than for legally insured persons if you're a citizen of the EU you should be able to build your own health insurance without any problems as a tourist you should ask your own health insurance beforehand or take out an international health insurance if there are people in Germany who are not insured and who cannot afford the treatment they will of course be treated anyway here it's checked who can bear the cost for example the social welfare office there is no organization here like for example the NHS in the United Kingdom for homeless and poor people there are also facilities in various places that take care of the sick people for free who of the spectators have one or the other euro left can give their a donation as already shown in the video germans love to compare and to complain one gets in germany fastest an appointment with a specialist my example recently i had broken off part of a tooth i called my dentist shortly before 10 in the morning on Monday got an appointment at 10:45 I was there early and was out of the dental practice shortly after 11 o'clock well treated if we make international comparisons we notice that we have quite high expenditures for the healthcare system the highest after the USA and Switzerland with quite a small share of private costs on the other hand we are 28th in life expectancy with about 80.6 years according to the 2021 determination here's an overview of some major countries infant mortality is very low if you look at spending on medicines the proportion of spending is in the middle so where do the costs come from 
We have a very high number of doctors per 100,000 inhabitants, the highest after Austria and Norway. In terms of the number of nurses, excluding midwives, we come eighth in the OCE. But in Germany there is currently a discussion about a shortage of nursing staff and physicians, especially rural physicians. Country doctors are general practitioners in more rural areas. We have the third most physicians and are complaining about so shortage? A quarter of physicians are 60 and older. For many medical students it is more interesting to be an employed than self-employed as a family physician. Of course, the healthcare system would not collapse, but the quality would be completely different without the number. That's why many regions are trying to attract family physicians. In addition to physicians, nurses are also important. Just in the corona crisis it was shown how important the nursing staff was in treating the severe cases. Already in 2019 a law was launched to attract more nurses. Likewise, caregivers abroad were deliberately approached and some caregivers are already working in Germany in hospitals, elderly care or mobile care services. In this video, Easy German accompanied a young person from Morocco who describes his impressions of working in Germany. Hallo Leute, wir begrüßen euch heute aus Lübben im Spreewald. Hier besuchen wir Josef. Josef, du kommst aus Marokko genau. und hast auch mit Easy German Deutsch gelernt. Ja, und dafür bin ich euch sehr dankbar. Das hat meine Sprache wirklich sehr gut verbessert und ja, herzlich willkommen. Josef arbeitet jetzt hier in Deutschland. Genau genommen ist er ein Pflegefachmann. Du machst gerade diese Ausbildung. Hier hinter uns ist eine Seniorenresidenz, wo du arbeitest und du hast uns gesagt, dass du uns mal einlädst und uns deinen Berufsalltag zeigst. Das finden wir total spannend, vielleicht auch für euch spannend, die überlegen, so einen Beruf zu ergreifen. Und wir gehen jetzt einfach mal rein und werden uns mal deinen Berufsalltag angucken. Genau. Since you can't learn German with me, check out Easy German. You can learn German there too, as Joseph has confirmed. Germany has a good, albeit expensive, healthcare system, which has its advantages, but also disadvantages. For a legally insured person, it is actually very simple and unbureaucratic. You simply present the electronic health card, which is then given to each member in the family, and the billing is done automatically with a health insurance company. Every year, you are asked if anything has changed in the family. And sometimes people treat themselves to private supplementary insurances, for example, to cover possibly co-payments for dentures. One prospect is electronic patient file, which already exists on a voluntary basis, but which in future should apply in principle to everyone. This is in contrast to the fundamental desire for data protection and sovereignty over own one's data. After all, Germans consider their own data to be very important. A final point for the healthcare system is the law on existence. Anyone who sees an emergency for example an accident or an unconscious person, is legally obliged to help. First aid is taught in schools and it is made clear to children that if the person needs help, I must help and I should help. In this case, possibly damage such as broken ribs due to cardiac massage is irrelevant because without the help the person would have died. Here, no victim complains that he was helped or sues the helpers in the end. Where would one do such nonsense? On the contrary, if I do not help, I make myself punishable. Of course, the help has to take place in a framework in which I can help. No one should jump into a frozen lake and put themselves in danger, or a mother with two children by hand should not let them go at the road and run to the accident happened, but everyone call at least dial 112 or in the case of drowning possibly hand a rod or alert others to the emergency. As shown in the video basics on driving and traffic in Germany, every drive in Germany must have completed a course on immediate measures at the scene of an accident and have basic knowledge of first aid. 
Health is therefore a task that is considered from all sides, from one's own health care and a little basic knowledge through the family, teaching the subject in school, through the personal in the health service and the employers who should care about the health of employees, to the point that everyone must provide assistance in case of emergency. So in the event of a medical emergency, dial 112 throughout the EU or Switzerland. If it is so happens that people from, for example, North America dial 911 out of reflex, there is nothing wrong with that because 911 will be redirected to 112. Thank you for your attention and stay healthy.